In this Anomaly Grasshopper tutorial, I want to show you how we can use this plugin uh, to produce a hexagon uh, fractal. As you can see here, I can increase or decrease the number of the hexagons. And as you can see, each of these uh, hexagons are uh, based on their edges. It can be changed from the start of the edge to the end of the edge. So uh, the basics are really simple and so uh, I have made this example as simple as possible so you can understand the Anomaly uh, plugin. Uh, so first uh, I'm going to show you how we can produce the hexagon uh, and then I'm going to make them uh, like a tower so you can see it's a twisting tower we can define this uh, twisting based on the point on curve and at the end uh, we will talk about uh, two different types of uh, anomaly loops, which are the classic loop and the fast one. Okay, to get started, first of all, I'm going to install the anomaly plugin. After you download this plugin, you can simply uh, drag this into the Grasshopper canvas or uh, extract it in the file special folder and in the component folder. If you reset and close your Rhino and again run Rhino again and you don't find this anomaly section here, uh, you can also go to the file special folder component folder, uh, find the plugin, uh, right click on it and choose properties and if you see any icon here that says unblock, you can unblock this and hit OK and again uh, close your Rhino and reset that and run it again. So this is the first step to install uh, an Omni plugin in a Grasshopper and after installation you have to have a, a tab here that says uh, the Anomaly plugin and we have the classic, the fast and so on. So the next step is to model this uh, hexagon fractal from scratch. So what I'm going to do uh, is to explain how exactly Anomaly works. So uh, what I'm going to do is to draw a simple hexagon here. So you can see that the number of the sides is 6 and we can go from 0 and enter and use the shift key to use the ortho uh, snap here okay and now we can go into the params menu and here in the curve section we can simply get the bifocals plugin so you can see this uh, I can import this curve into the grasshopper interface and now we can go to the anomaly uh, section okay so there is two type of loops you can do and what is a loop first of all I want to explain what a loop is so let me assume that we just, let's assume that we move this uh, simply up in the x direction maybe and a number, doesn't really matter. I want to explain that the loops are forbidden in Grasshopper and because uh, when we move this uh, hexagon forward and if we want to just turn this back into the curve so we want to say that uh, Grasshopper move this uh, 2.5 again 2.5 again 2.5 and make a loop in grasshopper we can't turn something that is downside of the uh, algorithm to the upside so you can see that this will make a loop and so this is forbidden in grasshopper and that it uh, makes an error so you can see that uh, cyclic data steam detected and so you can't really produce recursive data so what we can do is to use the Anomaly plugin and uh, what we're going to do is to use the fast one because the, the best thing is about the fast loop is that uh, it works when you change the numbers. So we want to make this five times or four times or ten times. It will just update itself. But for the classic you have to double click sometimes. You have to uh, change data to have and see the animation but it's just a classic one and it just takes time to go forward it, uh, sometimes it's good for animation so you can use the classic loop here okay so I'm going to go to the fast and you can see that there's an end and a start so let's use this 
And as you can see, there are two tips up here. We can just connect this. And now uh, the input is from data. So you can see that this is uh, the first input and data comes from here and goes out here. So let's see, uh, assume that this curve comes in, it goes out, something happens and again it goes back to the data and again that uh, going to have the loop and we can uh, define how many times we want to run this. So this is a simple tool but it can do uh, many many complicated things in Grasshopper and it would just change your modeling because it's really important uh, to understand loops and I'm going to try to add a complete section in the Grasshopper course in the website about uh, Anomaly so uh, keep uh, checking the website to see different uh, Grasshopper tutorials in the course. So what I'm going to do is uh, you can have different uh, more than one input so you can see if I just put a plus here you can have a D1 here and you have to add another D1 here so you can have a D2 and again a D2 and so on. So you have to have the same number of inputs and outputs. We can just change this. We can change this to a curve simply. Okay, this is a curve. And typing this so you can see that we get we don't get confused when we are working on the uh, grasshopper loop. Okay, so what I'm going to do is to insert the curve into the curve, and perhaps we can also use this to show that we have exactly. Uh, use this to produce the curve. Okay, uh, what I'm going to use, uh, use the steps I'm going to take to produce that uh, hexagon fractal is to assume that we have this edge and we can use a point uh, whenever we want. We can use it at the start, we can use it at the end or at the middle. So if I just have a 20% from the start from all of the edges uh, you can see that we can connect these points together and produce another hexagon. So this is the simple trick we are using to produce uh, the hexagon fra uh, hexagonal fractal in Grasshopper. So what I'm going to do is to go to the curve and explode this. So here we go. We can explode this. And we have six segments. Now we can go to the curve, uh, to the... Uh, analy uh, okay, analysis and we have the point on curve tool. This is the tool I wanted to use. So the point on curve is a simple tool which you can give to the curves and you can see it here. It will just start from 0 to 1 but when we exploded that uh, hexagon into segments we can use it to wa uh, move on the edges. You can see from the start to the end. So this is simple. Okay. The next step is to uh, connect these points together. So I'm going to go to the curve and use this polyline tool con to connect them. Okay, and as you can see we have to close this so I'm going to go to the closed and set the boolean to true. Okay, and here we go. So you can see uh, how easy we can produce a hexagon inside an another hexagon. Okay, so we want to and make this happen again and again and this is the iteration here so if we have a curve here and that's a, basically a polyline we have to have a polyline here so uh, we can't give the points here you can see that doesn't mean anything so we can give this point this polyline again to that and now we can define how many times we need this so maybe 12 times and as you can see it just draws a hexagon here but it doesn't show uh, other hexagons between these ones okay so we can just go at the fast loop and right click on this and use the record data to see all the data between this so this is the tip you can use and you can see that I can decrease or increase uh, this hexagon hexagonal fractal and as you can see, we can also change the location of the point on curve so we can have different uh, fractals. So what happens if we want to make a tower from this? A tower which all of those floors are based on the hexagon, the first hexagon we made, okay? So you can see that we can 
also work this with another polygon so maybe we can just draw this and set this to the curve and you can see that this is another one so maybe to have better results we don't have to have these points here we need to bring them up so you can see how simple you can use this technique to produce and use this on another polygon so let's just take this back to the hexagon and let's just delete this and talk about the tower so what I'm going to do is to uh, work on the polygon here and move it a little bit up so we can also move this a little bit up in the Z direction and maybe 25.6 okay we want to move each of those hexagons uh, maybe 12 by 12 by 12 up to the Z direction so if I give this to the curve you can see uh, we are moving this up we can just change this and it just updates and what I'm going to do is to uh, check out the data you can see that this is a tree data which is uh, adding many zeros to define each step so we don't really need that we can right click and flatten this and as you can see we have 21 polyline curves and if we loved these curves together uh, you can see that the first curve is not in this because we started from the first curve and then uh, we just exploded in point on curve and so on so I'm going to add this uh, first to the loft and then by the shift key add this one and you can see that's going to complete the tower uh, we can simply let's just put this in a uh, curve so we can have this before we give it to loft and now we can simply uh, connect the surface to this uh, we can extrude this in the z direction to have the floors and we can also have this facade for that so let's just put this layer one put this into layer two and here we go you can see this okay let's just right click on the perspective and go on to the clipping plane okay I'm going to use a clipping plane a vertical clipping plane to show you inside the tower so you can just clip this and here we go and you can see that's exactly the tower which all of those floors are based on their um, bottom floors and the previous floor is defining the, le uh, the next one so uh, this is how you can use the Nomini plugin to produce a simple fractal hexagon fractal as you can see here uh, we can change the point on curve here and there's a tip here if we want to go to the let's just turn this off and take a copy control C control V copy here and let's go to the next part so that's a classic loop let's use a start and end exactly like this okay uh, we have 20 times we have this curve coming here then it's going here okay uh, what we need here we can delete this we can delete this okay this move comes to the data okay and as you can see when I connect this to the data it just uh, produces an animation we can again right click on this and record the data and you can see that doesn't fix it so the classic loop always needs a double click on the start to see this okay so you can use this for an animation thing to show you to show that the hexagon is basically based on its previous hexagon okay and uh, if you increase that that's not a problem but when you decrease it you can see that it doesn't run so you have to double click this so uh, you can understand when to use the classic one and you when to use the fast one so we can again add this flatten this and add this here and you can see that this is exactly uh, as the fast one okay and let's just double click this 
and you can see how easily you can make an animation here okay so we can even give colors to that so go to the display and a custom preview we can give this a loft give this to the extrusion turn everything off let's give this a swatch maybe give this a black color okay it doesn't really matter I want to show you that you can also use colors to show what is exactly happening okay the next thing about the loop is the exit as you can see here we have exit we have an exit we have a counter here you can see that this is a 19 maybe you need that number you want to show that okay let's just connect a panel to this and you can see when I double click this it just increases the counter okay uh, what we can do is just uh, let's go and use the area I'm using the area to uh, let's turn everything off uh, we have this area here and you can see that this is about 300 but I don't want to uh, reach that number so we can just have an exit from the loop to uh, block the loop from continuing so what I'm going to do is simply go to the mathematics and use these uh, operators here larger than smaller than we want to exit you can see that set true to exit the loop so when it's a true it's going to exit so we can say uh, is it a smaller than maybe 600 and you can see that's going to be a true and we can give this to the data and let's just uh, assume that we had here we can double click this okay so this is not a good number let's just decrease this and you can see that okay I just gave this to data okay sorry so let's just turn this back and double click this okay you can see that this is going to be stopped uh, when it just reached uh, it's smaller than 600 so we can decrease that a little bit and again double click this and you can see it's going to be stopped when the area is going to be smaller uh, smaller than 440 so this is another technique you can use to exit uh, exit a loop and for the anomaly that's the basic thing you have to know it's really simple you have two kind of loops you have a classic you have a fast uh, you can simply let's just turn everything on uh, you can simply change the numbers in the fast one so it's running constantly but for the classic one it's just an animation sometimes you need that animation to draw that uh, you can also go to the uh, parametric house website and check out the anomaly grasshopper tutorial uh, we have uh, put the examples and the plugins in for the users so just feel free to register in our website and download the plugin download the example and you can also ask your questions here or tell us about the tutorial in the website. That's about the Anomaly uh, tutorial and you can see uh, how you can use it to uh, produce that uh, fractal hexagon. Thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing and your feedback. Uh, feel free to put your comments underneath our videos and thank you for uh, following us in uh, Instagram and in Facebook and in YouTube and thank you